Most of those who fought in the Second World War had been called up shortly after their countries had joined the conflict. But for the survivors, the onset of peace did not bring an immediate end to their military service or to the potential threats to their lives. So when we got home, we were given leave, issued with a jungle kit, little short carbine rifles, told to prepare for the Far East. The 5th Parachute Brigade was already underway. And, uh, but as I say, fortunately, the atom bomb dropped. So they decided we should go to Palestine. And uh, the troubles were just starting then. So we had uh, 18 months of guerrilla warfare there. I, as an individual, saw ships sank or sunk. Uh, but my particular ship was left unscathed, in spite of all the uh, scares. Mm -hmm. As I went through the war without a scratch, and a fortnight after the war was, the, the Far Eastern War was declared, which was the end of all warfare. A fortnight after, I caught typhoid in Egypt, really? and then so I spent a back to Abaddon, <laughs> and so I was three months there. There were two of us, they buried the other one, mm -hmm. they couldn't bury me. What would, what's, what's your best memory of your time in the army, would you say? But I would like to get out. <laughs> <laughs> I've spoken to a few I, 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 I had a good time, I had a good, especially in the of occupation when I was in Austria. Mm -hmm. I met this Austrian lady, she was 28, uh, she was 38 and I was 26. And her husband got killed in Russia. So you can imagine what happened. So we had a good time. And I could speak German practically fluently because I picked it up and studied it. In fact, when I moved from one area to another, I'm speaking Deutsches, mit ein Alsi Frau and all that, and I was speaking Deutsch. And this woman thought I was a Steyer, speaking in the dialect from Steyrmark. Yeah, she didn't know I was an English soldier. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, um, uh, th that, that was the best part of it, the back end of it. Mm -hmm. Palestine was, we were doing something I, dis I didn't agree with. I mean, I had had a look at belts and saw what, what had happened to them people. And yet there I was keeping them out of what they considered was their homeland, you know, Israel as it is now. And we were there, that was why we, the guerrillas were having a go at us. And uh, I, most soldiers didn't want to be there. They wanted to be out of it. But this, uh, but then, you know, we got the job at Haifa of uh, transferring people from, a. a illegal ships, or they were called illegal immigrants. We had to put them on British ships to take them to Fama Augusta and Cyprus. And of course, violence ensued. And uh, when violence starts, both sides use it. And that, that was awful, was that? that uh, we were using violence against civilians, you know. Minimal, but... And uh, I was never happy about that at all. But at least eventually a government called it a day, didn't they? And we got out, which we should have done along uh, immediately after the war. But uh, to put us in the middle where both sides were having a go at us, you know. And we lost quite a few men there. The railway kept my job open for me. Mm -hmm. They paid me part of my wages. Mm -hmm. Damn, I was aware, so you felt obliged to go back, didn't you? Mm -hmm. I didn't think many times about going back. I nearly did. Mm -hmm. I was looking, uh, I was looking, working at the ballot time, I was looking at the recruiting office window mm -hmm. and my Air Force shirt on. Mm -hmm. 
And the club officer stand at the door and he looks at me and says, I think about coming back. I said, oh, I am. He said, come on in then. Nearly as damaged. I could have been back in. Nearly as damaged. If you'd have pressed me then, I would have been back in. Mm -hmm. But it just gave me all the days to go home and think about it. Mm -hmm. Did you consider working in aviation after that? Uh, I was given the opportunity and afterwards I thought, well, I'd, I'd missed a chance there. Mm -hmm. Because I spoke to other people that I knew who did go in and they said what a good, uh, good experience it was. Whereas I went playing professional football. My relations that were in the war, they all came back. Very fortunate I went. But as I said before, one done it, it affected him mentally somehow. For being a, a lively fellow, he became, uh, he turned inwards somehow and died when he was in his sixties. Like he'd given up everything. Shame, really. And I'm convinced the war did it. A strange thing happened to me when I'd Dunes. Uh, I'd got promoted, and a certain person uttered these bloody Irishmen coming over here. And I said, Hold it, where were you during the war? I said, I earned the right to work and to live in England, not only because of my ancestry, but I said because I, 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 I wore the uniform of Britain and was ready to shed me blood if I had to do. I said, you didn't, Bill Short. He got an angry, I'd been promoted in front of him and he muttered this. And I said, come off with that, mate. I had a replacement hip a few years ago, and there was a mistake with it and I had to go in for some minor surgery. And when I was in the recovery room, one of the theatre nurses came out and she was looking at my documents and she saw the date 1923. She said, are you the next service man? I said, yes. I was in the fleet air arm. The fleet air arm? What's that? No idea. She probably about 50 years of age. So, a lot of people haven't even a clue what went on during the war. I thought everyone would have known something about the fleet air on. I thought I'd better be another conscientious objector. What is it, the fleet air on? Do you ever feel any animosity at all towards Germany or Italy? Or no, Japan? not really, no. You have a lot, see, a lot of them were the same as us, they were, put, they were dragged in. Mm -hmm. They were, you know, somebody the compulsory put in, you know. Yeah. Um, they were the enemy, I suppose, and what they were doing to us, we had to do it to them, but in actual thoughts, I couldn't really. How do you feel about Not being in the thick of the war, your outlook was slightly different to say you were in the thick of it, you know. Mm -hmm. If you'd, we'd been in the southeast where everything was happening and or and the big towns and cities were being bombed, we, that would cut your outlook a lot more than I should imagine. How do you feel about Germany today? Well, I've been there several times. It's a very clean country, very well looked after, beautiful country, clean and so on. It's slightly different to ours, but I wouldn't like to, I wouldn't like to live in Germany, but you know, I've been all over Europe several times. Well, you can't, don't come in contact with them, of course. But um, they're a different generation, and I suppose they're all right, like. I should say now that most people just treat them as a foreigner and that's it. They're no different to any other at all. Germany we can understand. Japan were treacherous and Italy didn't really want war. 
Doing in a while, yes, of course. I mean, it's not since the while. So. Mm. In fact, of German friends, I used to write to them. one of the one one of the prisoners was uh, were on my carrier, and we took him to Austria, and he he, he became interpreter for our regiment mm. because he could speak good English. He was a very nice fellow, Hans Revolt, I called him. Mm. But I've forgotten where they lived. And I wrote to him for a certain period, and then it sort of drizzled out, you know. I used to write to him in German, and he used to correct my letters. And he used to write in English, and I used to correct his letters. Mm -hmm. Well, at first, uh, I was working in Luton, because I lived down there all my life after that. I didn't come back up here. I lived down in London and Luton. Uh, in Naples and uh, we put some workbenches in there and they said the Japs are coming to work on this you know I said well I'm not working on there I don't want to be near them but I mean as you get older and things like that it's not the young ones today it's their farmers and that you know what I mean it's like Germany I suppose it's not these kids today, the young fellas today. It's the, it's the older generation, it's our generation, it's our silly buggers there. I mean, my missus, uh, we, changed it, we used to change the car every three years. And she, she used to pick them. <coughs> and she picked this lovely starlet, and that was made by Toyota. And she said, oh, well, that's nice. And the bloke came out and he said, she said, my husband, well, no, that. It's made in Japan. He said, yeah, he, you know. So I said, no, I mean, that bloody thing, no. But I mean, today, everything's made in China or, you know, you can't odds it, can you? Everything you buy is made out there. Mm -hmm. All right, I never bother about Germany. I don't hold it against anybody because uh, they were they were overseen by a group of people who died and uh, were shot and what have you. But uh, I mean, the bulk of the German people were all right. I have nothing against them. Naturally, you hated them, didn't you? And today? And today, how do you feel? Yeah, I feel fair to me. Still do. Okay. When you go on holiday, you meet the buggers. They're still a haggard, bloody crowd, aren't they? Uh, the farm I took was called Coppenhoff Farm. We captured them. As a matter of interest, I went back there several years ago and um, we went, we've gone to Coppenhoff Farm and the chap who ran the tour that took us knocked on the on the farm door and the lady came out and yeah. And uh, he said Coppenhoff Farm, yeah. And uh, he, tra he she didn't understand what he was talking about so I walked up and I said, um, Volsham Jäger, here, 1945. Oh, flung her arms around me neck, kissed me. I thought would have been told to take your hook. <laughs> the uh, the wife and uh, this lad from Blackpool, he was wounded in the Rhine Cross and was told it. And um, were in mini coach at the end of the path. Bring in, bring in. And this German family who owned the farm, they weren't. It was the grandmother that we met in 1945. Uh, laid a spread on for us treated as quite royally and present, I have it in there, a book in German of the airborne landing. And uh, impressed upon us, her husband did, that how grateful they were, it was the English that landed and not the Russians. Because our grandmother had seen how we treated their wounded the same as we treated our own. Since 1945, there have been no further wars between Britain and any of the former Axis powers but the UK has been involved in other conflicts, with the most recent including Afghanistan and Iraq. Uh, what's your view on the events in Iraq and Afghanistan? Waste of time. Up, so after Palestine, and I'm speaking from experience now, 
a sheer waste of time because they don't want us there. They never did want us there. And it's the worst day's work. There's lads being killed every day in Afghanistan for nothing because you won't be thought any better of. And the, the sooner they get them out, the better. Under what's happened to Iraq and what's happened now in Libya. It's like a civil war in Libya between two, the, the shooting each other. Iraq, they're blowing hell out of each other every other day. Uh, you'd have thought history would have told politicians we aren't wanted in, in the Middle East. We're not wanted. And yet these people persist in sticking their nose in and costing soldiers their lives. We weren't wanted in Palestine. And we were, you know, losing men. They were blowing the King David Hotel was blown up and uh, blow mines on the road and kidnapping our soldiers and executing them. Uh, we had all this to put up with. And it was ridiculous because we were never wanted there. And uh, we couldn't do any good. Whatever we did was wrong, you know, if we sided with the Jews, the Arabs were up in arms, and we sided with the Arabs, the Jews were up in arms. So uh, you couldn't win. I don't know enough about it to give an opinion on that. I couldn't really say. I don't know what it's all about, to be honest. I mean, before you pass an opinion, you've got to know what's brought it on. Well, I think we should get out, quite frankly. Because the, the Russians couldn't crack it, the Americans couldn't crack it, what happened we? And I don't think anybody has got any right to walk into another country and do what's been happening these last few years. What, what about Zimbabwe? What about Syria? They turned the blind to, they haven't settled Ireland, it's blown up again. Ireland was settled with appeasement. It's now happening again. Um, at my age, I'm glad to be the age I am, in a way. Because I think if people want to blow themselves up in their own country, and do, it's nobody's business but theirs. Whether I'm right or wrong, I don't know, but that's my view. Afghanistan, I'm two minds about because uh, if we had have left them, it's like a canker and could have got worse. Uh, and, and that's one side, and the other side is uh, why should we be fighting when the Afghanistans themselves are, are so tolerant of their enemies. So uh, we're not really eradicating the uh, Taliban at all. Uh, and again, it's all based on dope, isn't it? Whilst they, they, they're squabbling over themselves, everybody else is producing dope. And as far as the Middle East is concerned, that was bound to happen. Because sooner or later, uh, through the course of history, is that you can dominate people for so long, but sooner or later they rouse themselves. My views on that, what they're worth, they'll never win. We'll never win. We'll never win in Afghanistan. The Russians couldn't do it, we won't do it. They're just thinning the public down, that's all. But it's not war. The only thing that annoys me is they say they're at war. And they're saying now, you know, uh, collecting for the heroes and all that. Well, once you put a uniform on, you get any job. You get sent anywhere. You know, they're not heroes. They're heroes, the German prisoners of war and the Japanese prisoners of war that have come out of it. They're heroes. They're the people. You know, I'm sorry for these lads out there. It's like in Ireland. I'm sorry for them lads that was out there. 
But they're only peacetime, you know, it's not at war. But uh, that's, that's my opinion, by the way. Just me. No, I can't. Uh, can't start at these places, Iraq and all that. Good God. You see, I mean, they had all that trouble with Gaddafi and, and uh, the other geezer. Because what he was doing to his country. Now you look at Burma, that bloke in Burma. We can't go there, have a look round. He don't allow us to go. And he's got his people under his thumb like that. He's as bad as Gaddafi and as cruel. But no better doesn't, doesn't help him get him out because there's no oil there or nothing. You see, we went to Iraq and all them places because of the oil. That's all. That's my view again. It's very sad. I mean, they don't lose many people, but they lose too many. And uh, I, I can't quite understand that they've got all this marvellous technology there uh, and the, 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 the people uh, who, are do it, who are doing it have nothing. They've only got virtually rifles and things uh, and bombs. And uh, I, I can't see. My, my, they have enormous losses that uh, the, these people have. Uh, but they, they, they keep, they've got a lot to go at. I mean, when they've got so many children, they, they, they can afford to lose them and do all this, uh, all this suicide bombing and stuff. It, uh, I don't think they'll ever win there at all. The, the Americans have tried these drugs, drones. I see they've, they've do, they, they keep killing the bosses, but they just, there's, there's so many to go at and they're so daft that uh, they'll never do it. As far as I can see, that these Arabs are still, still, still living in in the Middle Ages. Uh, they, they'll use our technology, but uh, that's as far as it goes. Uh, they, they still think religion is the thing, and of course, it, it, a lot of it's out of date now. I think it's all been a mistake, a very, very big and very costly mistake. When you think there's a what is it now over four hundred. 400, knocking over 400 bit soldiers killed in 10 years, 10 years of fighting. And now the Arabs have risen in Libya, they've risen in Syria, they're rising in Cairo at the moment. If that had been left, instead of having 400 bit dead British soldiers, they could kill one another and rise up. You follow what I mean? It, 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 we've interfered too quickly, definitely. And 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 take for instance, George Bush and Tony Blair, hand in glove together, and I think Tony Blair's made himself a fortune out of it. But um, that's beside the point. That's only my opinion. I, I bet I'm not far wrong either. And uh, uh, they got to be in the bonnet about uh, Iraq. Now Saddam Hussein. He made a mistake in invading the oil wells in Saudi Arabia. And uh, of course we went in and drove him out. Quite rightly so. Now that should have been the finish of that. But I think George Bush had got to be in the bonnet about his father Bush, who was, uh, did the uh, Iraq job, that he'd like to have another, another go at him. So the American intelligence, American intelligence, and I'll repeat again, American intelligence. They can go to the blooming moon and all things and other. But they, had, they, they must have had the eyes closed when they thought that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction. They couldn't even find a blooming pea shooter in when, when they went in, could they? What's come out in the papers lately? He, he hadn't even a long range missile. He had nothing. It, it's plenty of armour, but n nothing technology like, like it is today type of thing. Mm -hmm. And next door in Iran, they were dabbling in hot water, wasn't they? For the atom bomb. And the Americans couldn't see that, could they? 
No, that Saddam's aim was easy, mate, so they just went in there just for the sake of a battle, and of course then it's progress to Afghanistan. And if we'd have left it all alone, things, what's happening now among the Arab world would have happened then, in, in, the, in those places. That's just my opinion. There was no need for, the, uh, there was no need for 400 British soldiers, or more, or less, to lose their lives f for nothing. Falklands, yes, that was British territory, and the Argentinians invaded British territory, so we went in and drove them out. But that was British territory, we were looking after our own interests, but we were only poking our nose in there, and we should have done. And that's my opinion. Nearly all wars are based on greed, basically. That's what it is, greed. Somebody wants something of somebody else. Mm -hmm. Choose what it is. Although many conflicts have occurred since 1945, none have been anywhere near as devastating as the Second World War. But how do the remaining veterans feel about their participation in this historical event? We had a job to do, let me put it that way. We had a job to do, and if uh, we came across Germans, oh, they were in there for the same reason that we were in, but from their side of it, mm -hmm. did meet them occasionally. Well, I, I joined the Royal Reserve Corps in 1943. I finally took the uniform off in 1981. I met an awful lot of people we had I suppose you can say we had a good time in, a, in as much that we worked hard we carried out our sort of duties and we had nice recreational time we could go to dances we could go to we were out of the war zone as it were out of danger and we could enjoy it to the full principally it was a job it, it, it never occurred to me that, uh, well, it, it wouldn't be true to say that my life was in danger, but I thought that was a normal course of events. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, it, it, we just lived each day. Normally you'd think war is, isn't worth the price anywhere, but, but if uh, you think of Hitler going to invade this country, we'd be in a terrible state now, wouldn't we? So, to resist Hitler, yes, the war was a definite as far as I'm concerned. And the same with the Japs, because they were going to, they would be brutal. So, I know the first war was a war to end all wars, which 20 years later started again. But there again, it was because of the Second World. The First World War wasn't uh, organised. Just my last question now. Uh, do you feel proud of your military service? Yes, yes. I'm glad I did what I did because uh, I'm not proud of everything I did, but I know I did my best, that I couldn't have done any more.